My name is Dr. Kent Remington. I'm a practicing aesthetic dermatologist in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I started the first uh, private laser center in Canada in 1979 and have both my fellowships in dermatology in Canada and the United States. We now have 24 different laser light energy devices in our clinic, and I have performed over 120,000 laser cases these past uh, 47 years, since 1979. This focus of this video is uh, discussing ear keloids. Ears tell a story. The language of ears is quite remarkable. If we look at pierced ears, it's a fashion statement that started hundreds of years ago. And you can uh, tell a lot by the physiognomy of reading faces and ears, and not trying to prejudge them, but you can understand patients' lifestyle choices by looking at their ears. Ears send a message and tell a story. These cauliflower ears uh, send a message and tell uh, an interesting story. With Conor McGregor on the right here with his cauliflower ears, a uh, common phenomenon in wrestlers and in boxers and in kickboxers. So you can often write the story before there's any verbiage of just trying to understand the ears. So if we look at the anatomy of the ear, it can be quite basic with the helix, antihelix, the concha, tragus, antitragus, lobule, and uh, good results of anything with ears and faces are a result of good mathematics. So I use a golden ratio caliper to help outline exactly what we're trying to accomplish with patients, particularly with scars and with uh, gauge ear lobes. So the anatomy of the ear is much more complex than basic. Two basic types of ears, though, the ear lobe, the free lobe, the pendulous lobe, and the attached lobe, which is non-pendulous. But if we look at the anatomy, anyone that is doing aesthetic uh, procedures of the ear should understand the anatomy and the vascular supply and the cartilage uh, thoroughly before they undertake any project. So if we look at uh, keloid scars of the ears, it's common worldwide in all skin types, but more common in skin of color, and it varies from severity on the left to milder on the right. So the spectrum can be quite varied. This patient has had uh, pierced ears for many years and developed keloids about 10 years ago. And each side of the face are not twins, they're siblings, in this case they're brothers, and ears sometimes are just cousins. They don't match up at all. So scar revision, particularly keloid scar revision of the ears, requires steps, just like being a chef. There's steps that are important in the right syntax of the order and uh, depending on what you're trying to accomplish at the end. So with this patient, we realize that each side is not, not the same. It's essentially removing this and taking the earlobe uh, back to its more normal structure is like a Rubik's Cube pattern. This is much more complex than just the exophytic protruding keloid scars of ears from ear piercing or trauma. This is much more complex. So if we look at his uh, procedure here, I use the Ultra Pulse CO2 laser and I use an aftermarket handpiece, this 0.1 millimeter spot size in a focused continuous wave mode. It can be defocused like a camera. You can also use the stock 0.2 millimeter spot as well. And generally, depends on your laser system, I use anywhere from 12 to 15 watts for these procedures. And here, this is seven days later, and I treated just one ear at a time because it took one and a half hours to treat this. And I've done literally thousands of laser cases, but it's just time consuming to try to remove that keloid scar in that third dimensional, almost fourth dimensional type of pattern. So if we look at uh, his seven days, he's healing very nicely. And then the next project is to remove the left ear keloid, which is a brother to the other one. It's a cousin almost, as we're talking about. So the ultra pulse laser is bloodless, essentially, and the aftermarket handpiece in a focus and defocus mode. And if you look and see how much I've taken off here with just my graphics that I've created, and you can see how much I've removed. Quite amazing, actually. In six weeks, this is doing very well. It takes several weeks for all the collagen to remodel and mold. 
So now this is three months after and he's got a much better shape to his earlobes. He can stop wearing his hoodie and uh, a very rewarding procedure. Essentially, you draw it out, map it out, all the photography first, and then decide with this Rubik's Cube concept, this fourth dimension, start excising it. And then as we try to excise and defocus, I'm removing the actual keloid scar, just in, like having double vision, first vision to see what's happening, second vision to see the end result before you start, and take that scar right out, and then vaporize in a defocus mode the base of it. So here's another patient with skin of color with just one-sided earring with a pierced ear posterior. And we'll treat this one. Very similar, but much easier. This only took five minutes as opposed to the one and a half hours for that last patient. So that's immediate uh, post-treatment. And if you look at the project here, this is uh, photographed, anesthetized, and then uh, we use some skin hooks to retract the actual keloid. Be careful with the earlobe itself. There's no skin hooks here. And then just in a combination of focus and defocus mode, and just peel this all off. All these cases I'm showing you, watch carefully that I'm trying to restore the integrity of the ear structure of the genetics of that patient's ear. So we just try to remove just the excess tissue. And then here I'm just defocused like a camera concept and just vaporizing the remaining keloid scar so it'll heal much better over time. So our next patient is also skin of color, but she's an Asian patient with multiple um, ear piercing and only developed keloids in some of them, which is not uncommon. So if we look at the concept here, what I'm trying to do is excise these and then vaporize the base here, the ultra pulse CO2 laser focus technique. Uh, 0.1 millimeter spot size and gently peel this off trying to retain the integrity of this patient's ears and then have them heal very well. Uh, here we're just peeling this off almost like an orange peel kind of concept. So if you watch closely it's done very careful to retain the integrity of this patient's helix and uh, blend this off after. You can see it's nice and smooth. Just a little bit of healing will take place after that. So if we look at her immediate results, you can see uh, the keloids are gone, and we just vaporized the base, and all the sites were, were treated the same way. And then that's the immediate post, and then we'll follow her over the next few months. So here's a patient that has a more difficult type of scar because it's through and through scar on the upper helix, and we must be very careful in to retain the integrity of his helix and the shape so this is, all, this is over a year later with excellent results with the uh, ultrapulse CO2 laser. So this is more difficult post-traumatic type of scar where the scar is enveloped the whole upper helix. And here's where your double vision takes over, where you see the challenge and be able to see where the ear helix should be and then be able to remove the scar and have the helix like this. So this is almost a year later, and that's the amount of material that I removed. So another patient's skin of color, and this is a very solid, looks, it looks balloony, but it's actually solid keloid scar, very annoying. And again, when we take this off, you want to save the integrity of the ear structure itself. So peel it off and then vaporize the base. So this is a non-skin uh, of color patient. So this can happen in white patients as well. And we'll peel this all off, and, and if you notice, I've saved the integrity of the ear. And uh, this is all done very well. So with the project, with the steps that we perform, almost all patients have cantalog injected with hyaluronidase. I use a ligament jet technique, which increases the mechanical advantage almost 10 to 1. I actually wrote an article on this in 1984, 37 years ago or so. It's a very neat device. We have several of these in our clinic, and pretty well all the patients have this right after treatment, and then every six weeks for at least four to five times. Thank you.